With this video, we're going to get into the reproductive system and specifically we're going to focus on an aspect of the reproductive system that's seen in both males and females and is known as the HPGA, sometimes called the HPG axes. So I want to talk a little bit, first of all, about the name of this particular system and what it's actually doing. HPG stands for hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axes. So if you think about the hypothalamus and the pituitary, these are endocrine structures that are within the brain. The gonads are the testes in males, the ovaries in females. And so this particular relationship that is being demonstrated here is the brain's way or specific structures in the brain's way of communicating with the gonads in both males and females to control, in the case of males, um, production of testosterone and production of sperm, and in the case of females, to regulate production of estrogen and progesterone, the female hormones, um, and also the development of female eggs. So I've got a diagram here that shows both the female HPGA as well as the male one. For this particular folder, we're going to be focusing on the male system. It's a little bit more simple than the female system, although they are in many ways very alike. So what I want to do with this folder is get you very familiar with the system in males, and then we'll come back once you're familiar with it and look at the female system and talk about a couple of little things that are different about the female system. So we're going to focus over here on this part of the diagram where we've got the male HPGA axes. Here at the top of this chart, we've got a representation of the brain. And right in the center of the brain, there's an endocrine organ, which is known as the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus produces a hormone, which is known as gonadotropin releasing hormone, or GNRH is the abbreviation that you'll see for it often. And that particular hormone gets into the bloodstream because it's a hormone, right? And it travels just a short little distance to a structure that is just kind of inferior and anterior to the hypothalamus and that structure is known as the anterior pituitary. So here we have this represented on the diagram. Hypothalamus is producing the GnRH. It's traveling to this little structure right here, which is the anterior pituitary, also located in the brain. And GnRH, when it reaches the anterior pituitary, has a positive feedback on the anterior pituitary. So what I mean by that is it causes the anterior pituitary to increase its function. And one of the functions of the anterior pituitary is to produce a couple of hormones, LH and FSH. So LH stands for luteinizing hormone, FSH is follicle stimulating hormone. So the anterior pituitary begins to release more of this luteinizing hormone and this follicle stimulating hormone. Those hormones get into the blood in males, they travel to the testes, so the male gonads, and they have a positive feedback effect on the testes. So what they do is they cause the testes to start to produce more testosterone, which is going to increase production of sperm is kind of a side effect of that. And we have built into this system a structure that will prevent testosterone levels from becoming too high, right? If there was all just positive feedback going on here, we'd have gonadotropin releasing hormone being released all the time, which would cause our luteinizing hormone and our follicle stimulating hormone to be released all the time, which would cause this constant high production of testosterone, which could be a problem for males if testosterone levels are actually too high. So we have built into this HPG axis a system whereby testosterone, as it's released from the testes and as its levels start to build up in the blood, testosterone is gonna feed back negatively on the anterior pituitary. So you can see that negative feedback being represented here. It also feeds back negatively on the hypothalamus. So as testosterone levels are increasing in the blood, negative feedback causes the hypothalamus to stop producing so much GnRH, and it also causes the anterior pituitary to stop producing so much LH and FSH. That gives less stimulation to the testes so that testosterone is not produced in such high levels as it starts to build up in the blood. If testosterone levels start to decrease in the blood, 
then what happens is we no longer have this negative feedback on the anterior pituitary, we no longer have negative feedback on the hypothalamus, and these structures are then free to produce their GnRH, produce their LH and FSH at increasing levels to stimulate the testes to make testosterone and to also make sperm. So we've got this feedback loop here where there's some positive feedback, there's some negative feedback going on, but working together, we've got a system that's gonna keep testosterone levels and sperm levels as well within a homeostatic range and increase them if they're starting to get too low, decrease them if they're starting to get too high.